So let's take a look at the latest flavours of top class Imperial agent scoring support, and why I suspect that this assassin is going to be popping up in really quite a lot of Imperial armies. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Imperial Agents, and in particular focusing on the goodness that a Calidus Assassin that brings, now with a new cheaper points cost, but still the equal ability to jump around the board, doing secondaries and getting kills. So far in 10th edition, Imperial Agents have perhaps been surprisingly common on the battlefields. I feel like Games Workshop's usual balance philosophy for them is generally to try and make them playable, but not auto-include. For the most part, I think their balance team don't really want anyone to be pressured into running one arbitrary squad of Imperial Agents alongside whichever army they're running, so usually if anything gets quite too widely played, then they tend to make it a bit worse. That definitely seems to be what's happened with the Exaction Squad. I think this was a nerf that basically everyone saw coming. 35 points for just some ridiculously efficient infantry. Good saves and feel no pain, backed up by some good guns, and only for 35 points apiece, which meant they were pretty much the ideal objective capturing or secondary doing units. For 35 point minimum investment units, I feel like they basically made just about any list they were added to a bit stronger, and Games Workshop did come down pretty hard on them, meaning that they're now 110 points and you need to take a full squad of 10, so in general they're just not really in contention for the role of tiny units to jump around being expendable. For their role, the Inquisitorial Henchman or maybe the Boysman at Arms might be the way to go if you want those sort of things. We'll talk about them in a second, but in particular for this video I wanted to focus on the Calidus Assassin, which despite being really quite a competitive staple before, has gone down in points very significantly, dropping all the way from 115 points down to 90, a massive great big 22% points drop there, and though its command point interference ability has got a little bit worse, I still feel the points cost decrease probably outweighs the change in that ability. It is still useful on the right stratagems, though maybe a little bit for some armies more than others. Previously in army list, the two assassins that were really quite regularly played were the Calidus and the Vindicare. The Vindicare still remains the same points cost, so I'm sure that he'll still get played, but I'd argue that the Calidus has maybe increased in value a bit, maybe he's going to see a little bit more choice proportionately. Taking a look at the Calidus Assassin's datasheet, she's 90 points for this stat line. The Assassins move quite quickly at 7 inches, and they stay safe with Lone Operative, though if and when the enemy does catch up with her, they're really not all that tough at all. Toughness for a 4 plus invulnerable save and 4 wounds just isn't all that much. Definitely has some danger of just being taken down by small arms, so you really need to make sure that they're being deployed so that they stay safe and jump around doing helpful things for the mission, and when they're engaging the enemy, they get the first strike and not the other way around. Lone operatives are just generally handy to have in 10th edition, though. Very nice to have units that are just out in the open, but can't be reached by your opponent if they can't move close enough. That can be helpful for primary objectives as well as just secondaries. The Cala just gets lots of flexibility with deployment. You can either infiltrate her far forward onto the board or deep strike both of which can be handy for secondaries and things, and the Calidus has the advantage of not necessarily needing to choose all the time as well due to the polymorphine. The Calidus's signature shape-shifting drug is the thing that makes it quite so good for doing secondary points. Basically, polymorphine means that at the end of your opponent's turn, if the model isn't in combat, you get to then remove it from the battlefield, and then have it basically just turn up as if via deep strike, 9 inches away from enemy models in your next movement phase. Basically it's like a Grey Knight style free redeploy each turn, you're basically always going to be able to trigger it provided your opponent hasn't been able to catch up with her, though if she is winding up in combat with anything strong then she's probably not going to survive anyway. This one can just translate to near guaranteed victory points if you're playing tactical objectives, say if you draw things like behind enemy lines, investigate signals, engage on all fronts or deploy teleport homer. The Calidus Assassin is generally going to be one of the best models to do that, it's quite powerful to have the redeploys going on even into the very late game and it's really quite hard to screen as well given that she's got quite a small base. If you desperately needed to get her somewhere to do an objective, then if the opponent's left any gaps whatsoever, she should be able to be put down. Otherwise, beyond the value of just jumping around doing secondaries, she does have her actual damage of course. A Nero Shredder gets d6 shots at strength 5, at AP 2 and damage 1 with anti-infantry 2 plus, and gets the precision keyword as well for a bit of character sniping. And in combat she gets 5 attacks with strength 5, AP 4 and damage 2, and that again has lethal hits and also having precision as well. Quite a nice generalist close combat profile, particularly with the lethal hits, though invulnerable saves will take it down a bit. Otherwise, with an auto-hitting torrent weapon, it could occasionally be worth overwatch with anti-infantry 2+. It is going to be a bit swingy depending on how well you roll though. And in combat, if she does get charged rather than do the charging, then you will at least get to fight first. Unless you can wipe out the entire unit, it's probably not going to be enough to save her. 
but that could be quite nice for a last gasp of damage if her main duty is already done. Overall though, putting those two attacks together, if you can both get to shoot and charge an enemy unit with a character in, you do have a pretty reasonable chance of killing most normal Space Marine sized characters. Between the Flamer and the Phase Sword, you average around about 5 wounds to most Toughness 4 characters with an invulnerable save. She should fairly reliably kill most support characters without one, but anything with an invulnerable does mean that you've got a good chance of things bouncing, plus your opponent could maybe command point reroll. Otherwise though, by the damage output and the ability to jump around doing secondaries, she also gets her Reign of Confusion special rule to basically ruin one enemy stratagem. This is one of the rules that modifies the stratagem and makes it increase by one extra command point, and it has been limited a bit in the latest balanced data slate in that you can only use it to target battle tactics stratagems. That does make it unfortunately a fair bit more limited in scope than it used to be, though it is still quite a nice ability to have. Depending on your opponent, it might still be that their most important stratagem is a battle tactic one. It'd be worth checking their options at the start of the game. And even if not, if there's nothing that's good to target, it's probably just worth throwing this at the command point reroll. That one is a battle tactic, and it does mean that if they ever needed to reroll a key save or a key charge, they might either have to pay out 2 CP for it, or just not have the option of doing so. That could be extremely disruptive to prevent a really bad thing happening for them. Overall, between the three key things that she does, the Calidus Assassin, I think, brings loads of value to the table. I feel like most of the time I'd probably be most tempted to start her on the board, either infiltrating somewhere safe, or even just back in the deployment zone, and then use her polymorphine ability to disappear from the table at the end of the opponent's first turn, or ready to deep strike somewhere new in the next turn. If putting her in reserves, you could use Rapid Ingress to get a near guaranteed charge on the enemy. Lone operatives are quite powerful for that, because if you bring them in by rapid ingress, then you know that nothing can really harm them if they're greater than 12 inches away from the enemy. They won't be able to either shoot or charge, barring any movement shenanigans that the opponent might have. I'd probably aim to use her debuffer stratagem ability early on if possible. Depending on which options the opponent has, I'd be really quite tempted by using it on the command point reroll, but ideally early in the game to actually cause some disruption, as you don't want to use it too late. Depending on what tactical secondary cards that you draw, she can go after those and say drop down in the corner of the board while remaining safe, or perhaps hide in the enemy deployment zone and keep out of line of sight. She could even be used to claim an isolated primary objective out in the open. If your opponent can't reach her to deal damage, then it's basically yours for a turn. And for her actual damage, I think she'd either most want to go after isolated squads of enemy infantry, things that she can hit hard before they get to strike back and hopefully slay all of them, Nothing too big and dangerous though that she's just going to bounce off, or potentially if there is a big scary character buffing something meaningful, then a round from the Neural Shredder followed up by the Phase Sword melee could be enough to just kill them straight out of a unit. I feel like it might be a little bit tricky to coordinate though, you need to go after something that's meaningful enough to justify throwing her life away for it, but also something that she can reliably kill that isn't too durable. Feels like there might be a bit of a balance to be struck there. In general though, I just focus on playing fairly conservatively and staying safe where possible. I think she's pretty awesome value for 90 points if she can be active for a while, but just generally isn't going to be worth it if she just charges headlong into melee with something scary, does a tiny bit of damage and gets herself killed. That would definitely be the wrong way to use her. Finally, just while we're on the subject of Imperial Agents and scoring points, I do kind of wonder whether the Inquisitorial Henchman Warband might become the new Exaction Squad for some armies. People just falling back to the next dirt cheap unit for doing things like screening secondary and holding primary objectives for very very small investments. I feel like these guys are quite an interesting squad and do get some fairly fun special rules if you put an Inquisitor and a few of the specialists in there, things like a minus one to wound and an invulnerable save, though that does make them into a lot more of a big high investment unit. If you've just got quite an elite army and you want a very cheap squad to go and score some things then 40 points really isn't the worst. That gets you 8 wounds with the Inquisitorial Henchman at toughness 3 and a 5 plus save, 12 attacks in melee, and a few pistol shots within 12 inches, 1 upgraded to a free plasma pistol. If the main aim is just for them to be a very very cheap unit, then you probably don't want to spend any more points than 40. Though if army list construction did just leave you with 10 points spare, you could buy them something like a Jakero or a Demon Host, both of which add a little bit of extra threat to the squad. Overall, I'd say they're not particularly good in damage, though they're kind of okay in defence with two wounds of that profile, I guess. And I feel like armies like Imperial Knights might still really profit from a tiny unit like this. They're not really meant to do any real damage to the enemy, but if the choice is between a unit of these guys having to move to do a secondary, or to hold down a home field primary that's safe and let the other knights go out to go stomping the enemy, then I still feel like a unit or two of these guys could be worth it. 
Though I feel at 40 points we are now getting to the point where quite a lot of other armies have units that don't really cost too much more. Let me know what you make of Allied Imperial Agents in 10th edition then. Would you be tempted by a Kalidus Assassin jumping around doing your secondaries and assassinating people? Or any small units of Inquisitorial Henchmen or maybe Voidsmen for grunt work? Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video then feel free to subscribe to Auspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.